In this video lesson, we're going to start diving into two of our laws of thermodynamics. We're not going to talk about all of them today, just a couple of them, okay? Now, the first law we want to talk about is called the zeroth law of thermodynamics. Now, it seems kind of weird. Why isn't the first law called the first law of thermodynamics? Okay. So here's what happens. Um, scientists got together. They figured out all these different things about thermodynamics. They had the first law. They had the second law. They had the third law. And then at some point in time, they decided, wait a minute. There's something even more fundamental that we kind of glossed over, that we didn't even talk about. We all know it's true. But we probably should write it down, and we probably should identify it as a law of thermodynamics. Uh, so instead of changing the numbering systems of the 1, 2, and 3, because it was the most fundamental thing, they called it the zeroth law. So it's kind of like a laziness or kind of an oops, we kind of forgot about this thing. But that's what it is, okay? So now we call it the zeroth law of thermodynamics. And the law is actually pretty straightforward and pretty simple. It's something you're probably going to be like, oh, yeah. Like, duh, Mr. Durson, that makes perfect sense. And here's what it says. It says if you're looking at temperature, okay, not energy. Remember, we're, there's a difference between heat and temperature here. If you're looking at the temperature of three different substances, if you put them into contact with each other, okay, if A and B are the same temperature and B and C are the same temperature, then by default, A and C both will also have the same temperature. That's all it says, okay? In fact, they don't even need to be in contact. So all the zero law tells us is that if one object is the same temperature or in equilibrium, we call that, with another, that other object is also in equilibrium or the same temperature as another, then you can assume that the things that are not together are the same also, okay? That's what it is. Pretty basic. This concept is going to play kind of a backbone kind of role in some of the stuff we'll do later on in this unit. Now, keep in mind, that does not mean they have equal amounts of energy, okay? just equal temps. That's kind of the key thing as we look at this because A is much smaller than B. So if you look at their energy or their heat content, A will have less heat content. B would have more heat content at the same temperature. Okay, So kind of keep this in mind. We're talking about equilibrium temperatures here. Now, second one we want to take a look at is the second law of thermodynamics okay and we're not actually going to look at the whole thing we're going to look at a portion of that law that flow that talks about heat flow or how does heat move in our objects okay so it's kind of part of the second law of thermodynamics with it we're skipping the first law for a reason we're going to focus on that a little bit later on in our unit okay when we look at heat flow we want to identify how does heat move okay so here we go when things are put into contact, we always have heat flow that goes, if you have something that's high temperature and low temperature, where's the heat going to flow? Okay. There was a part in our history where there were people who were arguing that there was something called cold. Okay. There was heat and there was cold. And cold could move into heat and heat could move into cold. So they treated them as two different entities. We've now kind of realized that that's kind of silly, and the reality is that cold is just the absence of heat, okay? So being cold is just the lack of thermal energy. It doesn't have its own presence in our world, okay? So when you bring something that's cold next to something that's hot, we get this flow of heat, and it always flows from high temperature to low temperature, okay? Not high heat, not low heat, temperatures, okay? So... If we have things that are not the same temperature, have different average kinetic energies, we're going to have the heat flow from the high average kinetic energy or the high temperature into the cold. That flow will continue until you either separate them by an insulator or you get equal temperatures. Okay. Now, in our houses, you know, we are constantly fighting this, okay? We have insulation in our houses. In the wintertime, we run a furnace that is constantly putting energy in, that's constantly keeping a separation of heat between our house and outside. In the summertime, we flip the scenario, where we're constantly trying to keep a separation between the outside and the inside. We want it to be colder than the outside. Than the outside. So in Minnesota, we have a lot of conversations about heat flow in our world because and what the natural world of everything is, it wants to come to this equal temperature as we move things. And we fight that with our insulation and our furnaces and our air conditioners in our houses every day. Okay, This is a pretty fundamental piece of this unit. So anytime we move forward, keep in mind in the back of your heads that we're always going to have heat flowing from hot things to cold things. And they'll continue to do that until they equalize in temperature. Okay.
So we're going to stop the video here. And then what we're going to do is, in our next video, start talking about the different methods for our heat transfer. Okay, thank you.